Butch Cassidy, we've been friends for a couple of years. It's been a real honor, but you've you've never told me how it started, man. What what was the first song that made you sit up and listen? Oh man, the first song that made me sit up and listen for myself? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. In the annals of American folklore, the name Butch Cassidy conjures images of daring heists, Wild West bravado, and a life lived on the fringes of society. However, amidst the dust and gun smoke of the frontier, another Butch Cassidy emerged, a West Coast American soulful singer who left an indelible mark on the cultural landscape of his time. Join us as we embark on a journey through the life, music, and tragic fate of Butch Cassidy. The life and fate of Butch Cassidy. In the vibrant city of Long Beach, California, a young boy named Danny Elliott Means Second was born. Little did anyone know that this boy would grow up to become an iconic figure we now know as Butch Cassidy. Danny, or Butch as he would later be called, was raised in a modest neighborhood, surrounded by the sights and sounds of West Coast hip hop. From an early age, he was captivated by the rhythmic beats and soulful melodies that filled the airwaves. It was here that his love for music was born. Butch Cassidy's upbringing was not without its challenges. Growing up in a community where opportunities were scarce, he faced adversity and hardship. However, it was these very obstacles that fueled his determination to succeed. With a burning passion for music and a relentless drive to make a name for himself, Butch Cassidy set out on a path that would change his life forever. As a teenager, Butch Cassidy immersed himself in the local music scene, honing his skills and perfecting his craft. He spent countless hours writing lyrics, practicing his vocals, and studying the greats who came before him. It was during this time that he developed his signature smooth and soulful style, which would later become his trademark. Butch Cassidy's talent did not go unnoticed. His unique voice and undeniable charisma caught the attention of industry insiders, and soon he found himself collaborating with some of the biggest names in West Coast hip hop. Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, Kurup, and Ice Cube were just a few of the artists who recognized his immense talent and invited him to join them in the studio. His collaborations with renowned artists not only showcased his versatility, but also solidified his status as a force to be reckoned with in the industry. Butch Cassidy's rise to fame was meteoric. His collaborations with these established artists propelled him into the spotlight, and his music resonated with audiences far and wide. His smooth vocals and infectious hooks became synonymous with the West Coast sound, and his songs dominated the airwaves. One of Butch Cassidy's earliest collaborations was with the legendary Nate Dogg. Their partnership resulted in the creation of timeless tracks that became instant classics. Songs like Be Thankful and I Don't Want to Hurt No More showcased their seamless chemistry and showcased Butch Cassidy's smooth vocals alongside Nate Dogg's iconic hooks. Butch Cassidy's collaborations extended beyond Nate Dogg as he became a sought-after collaborator for artists such as Snoop Dogg, Kurup, and Daz Dillinger. His contributions to Snoop Dogg's album, The Last Meal, were particularly noteworthy. Tracks like G'd Up and LBC Thang showcased Butch Cassidy's ability to effortlessly blend his soulful vocals with the West Coast gangster rap sound. Not only did Butch Cassidy collaborate with established artists, but he also played a significant role in the formation of supergroups like The East Sedaz. Alongside Snoop Dogg and Trey D, Butch Cassidy Cassidy contributed his smooth vocals to tracks like Get Up and Lay Low, which became instant hits and solidified the East Sedaz as a force in the West Coast hip-hop scene. Butch Cassidy's collaborations were not limited to just rappers. He also worked with producers and musicians who played a crucial role in shaping the West Coast sound. DJ Quick, DJ Battlecat, and Warren G were just a few of the talented individuals who recognized Butch Cassidy's talent and invited him to contribute to their projects. His collaborations with these producers resulted in tracks that seamlessly blended elements of funk, soul, and hip-hop, creating a sound that was uniquely West Coast. In addition to his collaborations, Butch Cassidy also released solo albums that showcased his artistry and versatility. Albums like Back B For You're Lonely and I'm Here allowed him to explore different musical styles and experiment with his sound. These albums featured guest performers such as Snoop Dogg, Karup, and Latoya Williams, further highlighting Butch Cassidy's ability to collaborate with a diverse range of artists. Butch Cassidy's contributions to the West Coast hip-hop scene extended beyond his music. He became a cultural icon, representing the essence of West Coast style and attitude. His smooth vocals, charismatic stage presence, and undeniable talent made him a sought-after performer, captivating audiences with his electrifying live performances. One of the key aspects of Butch Cassidy's impact is his ability to bridge the gap between different musical genres. His smooth vocals and versatile style allowed him to seamlessly transition between hip-hop, R&B, and soul, creating a sound that appealed to a wide range of listeners. This versatility not only showcased his talent, but also opened 
open doors for future artists to explore and experiment with different musical styles. Butch Cassidy signed with various record labels, including Death Row Records, Doggy Style Records, Baby Re Inc., and KCP Records, among others, showcasing his versatility and widespread appeal in the industry. One of Butch Cassidy's earliest affiliations was with Lynch Mob Records, a label founded by the legendary Ice Cube in the early 1990s. It was during this time that Butch Cassidy became a member of West Side Connection, a supergroup also featuring Ice Cube and Mac 10. Their debut album, Bow Down, released under Lynch Mob Records in 1996, solidified Butch Cassidy's presence in the West Coast hip-hop scene. Butch Cassidy's affiliation with Death Row Records was significant. He was associated with the label from 1996 to 1998, during which he worked with many notable artists, including Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac Shakur. Death Row Records was a major player in the West Coast hip-hop scene, and Butch Cassidy's involvement with the label helped cement his reputation as a talented singer and collaborator. Priority Records, a prominent independent label, played a pivotal role in Butch Cassidy's career trajectory. The label released Bow Down, catapulting West Side connection to mainstream success. Butch Cassidy's affiliation with Priority Records allowed him to establish his reputation as a skilled rapper within the industry. Under the umbrella of Priority Records, Butch Cassidy found himself collaborating with Snoop Dogg's imprint, Doggy Style Records. This collaboration led to the release of Paid the Cost to Be the Boss in 2002, where Butch Cassidy contributed his talent alongside Snoop Dogg. Doggy Style Records provided Butch Cassidy with a platform to showcase his lyrical prowess and further cement his place in hip-hop history. Butch Cassidy's versatility as an artist transcended geographical boundaries, leading him to collaborate with artists affiliated with various labels. His association with So So Deaf Recordings, founded by Jermaine Dupri, exemplifies his ability to adapt and thrive in different musical environments. Through collaborations with artists like Jagged Edge and DeBrat, Butch Cassidy showcased his versatility and contributed to the label's rich tapestry of hip-hop and R&B. Butch Cassidy also signed with KCP Records. He released his first album with them in 2011. KCP Records is an independent record label that has worked with many artists in the West Coast hip-hop scene. Butch Cassidy's signing with KCP Records helped him get his music out to a wider audience. Butch Cassidy's enduring legacy lies in his ability to captivate audiences with his soulful and emotive performances. His music resonates with listeners on a deep level, evoking emotions and creating connections that transcend time and place. Butch Cassidy's success was not limited to the music industry. He also ventured into acting, making appearances in movies and television shows. His magnetic presence and natural talent translated seamlessly onto the screen, further solidifying his status as a multi-talented entertainer. Beyond his musical contributions, Butch Cassidy's philanthropic efforts have also made a lasting impact. He has used his platform to give back to his community and support causes close to his heart. Through charitable initiatives and community outreach programs, he has made a difference in the lives of many, inspiring others to use their success for the greater good. Despite his fame and success, Butch Cassidy remained grounded and true to his roots. He never forgot where he came from and used his platform to uplift his community. Through his music and philanthropic efforts, he became a role model for aspiring artists and a beacon of hope for those facing adversity. Death Row Records and Tragedy. In the early 1990s, a seismic shift was taking place in the world of hip hop, and at the forefront of this revolution was the birth of Death Row Records. Founded in 1991 by the Doe C, Dr. Dre, Suge Knight, and Dick Griffey, Death Row Records emerged as a powerhouse in the music industry, forever changing the landscape of West Coast rap. The label's establishment was fueled by a collective vision to create a platform for artists to express their raw and unfiltered stories. Dr. Dre, a legendary producer and rapper, brought his unparalleled talent and innovative sound to the table. His groundbreaking album, The Chronic, became the cornerstone of Death Row's success, introducing the world to the infectious G-Funk sound that would define an era. Death Row Records was one of the most influential labels in hip-hop during the 1990s, known for artists like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac Shakur. While Butch Cassidy collaborated with artists who were associated with Death Row Records, such as Snoop Dogg, he himself wasn't officially signed to the label. As Death Row Records began to gain traction, it attracted a roster of immensely talented artists who would go on to become icons in their own right. One such artist was Snoop Dogg, whose smooth flow and distinctive voice captivated audiences worldwide. Snoop Dogg's debut album, Doggy Style, released in 1993, became an instant classic and solidified his status as a rap superstar. They Dog Pound, a rap duo consisting of Daz Dillinger and Corrupt, also joined the Death Row family. Their debut album, Dog Food, was a critical and commercial success, further cementing Death Row's dominance in the industry. The label's roster continued to grow, attracting talent 
talented artists such as Nate Dogg, Michelle, and Lady of Rage, each bringing their unique style and contributing to Death Row's sonic tapestry. However, it was the signing of Tupac Shakur in 1995 that propelled Death Row Records to new heights. Tupac, a charismatic and outspoken artist, became the face of the label and a symbol of the West Coast rap movement. His album All Eyes On Me, released under Death Row, shattered records and solidified his status as one of the greatest rappers of all time. The rise of Death Row Records was not without controversy. The label's association with gang culture and violence became a topic of intense scrutiny. Suge Knight, the CEO of Death Row, hired gang members from various sets, including the Mob Piru Bloods and the Fruit Town Piru. This alliance would have far-reaching consequences and contribute to the tragic events that would unfold in the years to come. Despite the controversies, Death Row Records continued to dominate the charts and the airwaves. The label's artists were not only creating music, but they were also shaping a cultural movement. Their lyrics reflected the harsh realities of life in the streets, giving a voice to those who had been marginalized and ignored. The success of Death Row Records was not limited to the music industry. The label's influence extended to popular culture, with its artists becoming larger-than-life figures. From their fashion choices to their larger-than-life personalities, Death Row's artists became trendsetters and cultural icons. However, as Death Row Records reached the pinnacle of its success, tragedy struck. In 1996, Tupac Shakur was tragically gunned down in Las Vegas, sending shockwaves throughout the music world. His death marked a turning point for Death Row as the label struggled to recover from the loss of its brightest star. Despite the challenges, Death Row Records continued to release music that resonated with audiences. Artists such as The Dog Pound and Snoop Dogg carried the torch, keeping the label's legacy alive. However, internal conflicts and legal troubles began to take their toll on Death Row, leading to the departure of key artists and the eventual decline of the label. In 2006, Death Row Records filed for bankruptcy, signaling the end of an era in hip-hop history. The label was later sold to Wide Awake Entertainment, but its glory days seemed to be a distant memory. While Death Row Records enjoyed immense success and influence in the music industry, it was also plagued by a series of tragedies and controversies that would forever stain its legacy. The label's association with gang violence and criminal activities led to a string of shocking incidents that shook the industry and captured headlines. One such tragedy occurred with the murder of an aspiring rapper named William Rat Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe had been pressuring Shuge Knight, the CEO of Death Row Records, to sign him. In a chilling turn of events, Knight ordered a fellow Mob Pyru member to kill Ratcliffe. This act of violence highlighted the dark underbelly of Death Row Records and its association with criminal activity. Another high-profile murder associated with Death Row Records was the killing of the notorious Big following the murder of Tupac Shakur. Shuge Knight blamed Sean Combs, the CEO of Bad Boy Records, for Shakur's death and sought revenge. Knight allegedly hired someone to kill the notorious Big, and it was later revealed that Wardell Faust, also known as Poochie, was the shooter. However, as Faust was murdered in 2003, no charges were pressed against him, leaving the case unsolved and shrouded in mystery. The feud between the Mob Peru Bloods and the Fruit Town Peru Bloods further added to the violence surrounding Death Row Records. This deadly rivalry erupted when a former Death Row bodyguard, George G. Williams, was fired and became associated with a Fruit Town Peru member. The pair allegedly orchestrated a series of murders targeting Mob Peru Bloods associated with death. Row Records. This feud not only claimed lives, but also intensified the atmosphere of fear and violence that surrounded the label. The controversy surrounding Death Row Records extended beyond the tragic murders. The label's association with gang members and its reputation for violence drew the attention of law enforcement and the media. Death Row's founder, Shuge Knight, faced numerous legal troubles throughout the label's history. In 1992, he was involved in a high-profile altercation with two aspiring rappers, resulting in the death of one and Knight's subsequent arrest and conviction for assault. Knight's legal woes continued, and in 1996, he was sentenced to prison for violating his probation. The violent incidents and controversies surrounding Death Row Records cast a dark shadow over the label's legacy. While the music produced by its artists was groundbreaking and influential, the association with gang violence and criminal activities tarnished Death Row's reputation. The label became a symbol of the darker side of the music industry, perpetuating the stereotype of rap music as a breeding ground for violence and criminal behavior. While the history of Death Row Records is marred by controversy, controversy and tragedy, the label continues to make headlines with its recent developments. In a surprising turn of events, Snoop Dogg, a former artist on the label, has acquired Death Row Records with the intention of reviving its legacy. This acquisition has generated excitement and speculation within the music industry, as fans eagerly anticipate what the future holds for this iconic brand. Snoop Dogg's acquisition of Death Row Records marks a significant milestone in the label's history. As a longtime collaborator and friend of many Death Row artists, Snoop Dogg is uniquely positioned to to carry on the legacy of the label. His deep understanding of the West Coast rap scene and his own success as an artist make him the perfect candidate to breathe new life into Death Row Records. In addition,
addition to the acquisition, Death Row Records has made headlines with the launch of a new music label called Gamma. Former Apple Music Global creative director Larry Jackson has partnered with Death Row to bring this new venture to life. The collaboration between Death Row and Jackson's Gamma label has resulted in the release of albums by artists such as Jane Hancock and October London. This exciting partnership brings fresh talent to the forefront and showcases the label's commitment to nurturing new voices in the industry. Furthermore, after a brief absence, Death Row's catalog has returned to all music streaming services. This move has been met with enthusiasm from fans who can once again enjoy the iconic music that defined an era. The return of Death Row's catalog marks a significant milestone for the label, as it ensures that its influential body of work remains accessible to a new generation of listeners. The recent developments surrounding Death Row Records have sparked renewed interest in the label's legacy. Snoop Dogg, with his vision and passion for the music, aims to honor the label's storied history while also pushing it into the future. His plans for Death Row Records include launching a dedicated app with a streaming platform, providing a centralized hub for fans to access the label's music and discover new talent. The acquisition of Death Row Records by Snoop Dogg has garnered attention from industry insiders and fans alike. While the deal does not include the rights to artists such as Tupac or Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg's involvement ensures that the label's legacy will be in capable hands. His deep respect for the label's history and his commitment to preserving its cultural impact make him the ideal custodian of the Death Row brand. As Death Row Records enters this new chapter, the music industry eagerly awaits the label's next moves. The partnership with Larry Jackson's Gamma label and the return of the catalog to streaming services signal a revitalization of the Death Row brand. Personal Relationships Butch Cassidy maintained close personal relationships with both Nate Dogg and Snoop Dogg, two of the most influential figures in West Coast hip-hop. Cassidy's familial bond with Nate Dogg, who was his cousin, allowed for a unique creative chemistry between the two artists. This connection led to their collaborations on numerous tracks such as Scared of Love, Dirty Hose Draws, and I Don't Wanna Hurt No More. Nathaniel Dwayne Hale, the man who was also known as Nate Dogg, was born on August 19, 1969 in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Nate Dogg's journey began in the heart of the Deep South. Growing up, Nate Dogg along with his cousin Snoop Dogg and friend Warren G, formed a tight-knit trio that would later make waves in the music industry. But before the fame and success, Nate Dogg's roots were firmly planted in the church. As a youth, he showcased his vocal talents at the New Hope Baptist Church in Long Beach, where his father served as a pastor. It was here that his love for music and his powerful voice began to take shape. However, Nate Dogg's path to stardom was not without its challenges. At the age of 17, he made a life-altering decision to drop out of high school and enlist in the Marines, seeking to prove himself and discover discover his own strength, he was stationed at Camp Schwab in Okinawa Prefecture, Japan. As a member of the Material Readiness Battalion of the 3rd Force Service Support Group, Nate Dogg played a crucial role in supplying ammunition to the Pacific. After three years of serving his country, Nate Dogg was honorably discharged in 1989. His time in the military had a profound impact on him, shaping his character and instilling a sense of discipline and determination that would later define his music career. Returning to Long Beach, Nate Dogg reunited with his cousin Snoop Dogg and friend Warren G. And and together they formed the rap trio 213. Their first demo tape was recorded in the back of a local record store, VIP, and fate would have it that Dr. Dre would hear their demo at a bachelor party. Impressed by their raw talent and unique sound, Dr. Dre took them under his wing, providing them with the opportunity of a lifetime. It was at this moment that Nate Dogg's music career truly began to take off. He made his debut on Dr. Dre's groundbreaking solo album, The Chronic, in 1992. Nate Dogg's smooth and soulful vocals perfectly complemented the new gangster a rap sound known as G-Funk, earning him critical acclaim and setting the stage for his future success. In 1994, Nate Dogg's collaboration with Warren G on the hit single Regulate propelled him into the mainstream spotlight. The song reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and became an instant classic. This breakout success not only solidified Nate Dogg's reputation as a talented vocalist, but also showcased his ability to craft infectious hooks that resonated with audiences worldwide. As the 90s progressed, Nate Dogg's deep melodic voice became a sought-after commodity in the music industry. He collaborated with renowned artists such as Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Zibit, further establishing himself as a prominent figure in the West Coast hip-hop scene. His unique blend of R&B and soul vocals with gangster rap lyrics became his signature style, earning him the title of the King of Hooks. In addition to his collaborations, Nate Dogg released three studio albums in the 1990s, showcasing his versatility as an artist and further solidifying his place in music history. His collaborations with these artists also showcased 
showcased his ability to elevate any track with his smooth and soulful vocals. Songs like Dr. Dre's The Next Episode and Snoop Dogg's Ain't No Fun, If the Homies Can't Have None, became instant classics, solidifying Nate Dogg's status as a go-to vocalist for hooks. But Nate Dogg's collaborations extended far beyond the West Coast hip-hop scene. In the early 2000s, he expanded his reach and worked with a diverse range of artists, including Eminem, 50 Cent, Fabulous, Most Def, and Ludacris. His ability to seamlessly blend R&B and soul vocals with rap lyrics made him a versatile and highly sought-after artist. Nate Dogg's impact on the music industry cannot be overstated. His deep, melodic voice became synonymous with the G-Funk sound and left an indelible imprint on the genre. His unique singing style, often referred to as gangsta singing, combined the rawness of rap lyrics with the smoothness of R&B and soul, creating a sound that was both captivating and groundbreaking. This style would go on to influence countless artists in the years to come, with major R&B artists like R. Kelly and Chris Brown adopting Nate Dogg's signature blend of genres. Tragically, in 2007, Nate Dogg suffered a stroke which affected his ability to speak and perform. Despite his health struggles, he continued to make occasional appearances in the music industry. Sadly, on March 15, 2011, Nate Dogg passed away at the age of 41 due to complications from multiple strokes. Cassidy's friendship with Snoop Dogg also played a significant role in his career, as the two worked together on the hit single Lay Low from Snoop's album, The Last Meal. Their shared experiences in the West Coast hip-hop scene and their mutual respect for each other's talents led to a fruitful creative partnership that produced memorable music for their fans. Snoop Dogg, born Calvin Cordoza Broadus Jr. on October 20th, 1971 in Long Beach, California, had a childhood marked by both adversity and a passion for music. Growing up in a neighborhood plagued by gang violence and drug activity, Snoop Dogg navigated a challenging environment that would ultimately shape his unique perspective and artistic expression. From a young age, Snoop Dogg found solace in music, using it as an escape from the harsh realities of his surroundings. Heavily influenced by the vibrant hip-hop scene of the 1980s, particularly the West Coast rap movement that was gaining momentum, artists such as N.W.A. and Ice-T became his musical heroes and their raw and unapologetic style resonated deeply with him. As a teenager, Snoop Dogg began honing his skills as a rapper, participating in local talent shows and freestyle battles. His distinctive voice, smooth flow, and laid-back delivery quickly set him apart from his peers. It was during this time that he earned the nickname Snoop Doggy Dogg, a moniker that would later become synonymous with his musical persona. In 1992, Snoop Dogg's life took a dramatic turn when he caught the attention of Dr. Dre, a renowned producer and rapper. Dr. Dre was impressed by Snoop Dogg's unique style and invited him to collaborate on his debut solo single, Deep Cover. This collaboration proved to be a pivotal moment in Snoop Dogg's career. In 1993, he released his debut studio album, Doggy Style, under the guidance of Dr. Dre. The album was an instant hit, debuting atop the Billboard 200 and selling over 800,000 copies in its first week. It showcased Snoop Dogg's unique blend of smooth rhymes, infectious hooks, and laid-back charisma. Doggy Style spawned several hit singles, including What's My Name and Gin and Juice, which became anthems of the era. The album's success catapulted Snoop Dogg into the mainstream, making him a household name and solidifying his status as one of the most influential rappers of his generation. In the years following Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg released several successful albums that further cemented his place in the music industry. In 1996, he dropped Tha Dog Father, his second studio album. Although it didn't reach the same commercial heights as its predecessor, it still achieved significant success. In addition to his music career, Snoop Dogg ventured into other forms of entertainment, including acting. He made his film debut in 1994 with Murder Was The Case, a short film based on his own experiences. He went on to star in movies such as The Wash, Bones, and Training Day, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Snoop Dogg's charismatic presence and natural talent translated seamlessly from the stage to the silver screen, earning him critical acclaim and further expanding his fan base. Snoop Dogg's foray into television was equally successful. In 2007, he hosted his own variety show called Dog After Dark, where he showcased his comedic skills and interviewed celebrity guests. The show allowed fans to see a different side of Snoop Dogg, highlighting his wit and charm. He also appeared as a guest on various talk shows and late night programs, further solidifying his status as a beloved entertainer. Throughout his career, Snoop Dogg has faced a number of controversies and legal issues that have tested his resilience and reputation. These incidents have added layers of complexity to his persona and have shaped the public's perception of him. In 1990, Snoop Dogg faced a significant legal setback when he was convicted of felony possession of drugs and possession for sale. In 2006 and 2007 also, Snoop Dogg found himself in the midst of airport arrests and convictions. These incidents further fueled the media's fascination with his legal troubles and added to his controversial image. In 2015, Snoop Dogg faced another legal hurdle when he was arrested in Sweden 
for illegal drug possession. The charges were ultimately dropped, but the incident once again highlighted the challenges he has faced due to his association with cannabis. In 2022, he was embroiled in a high-profile sexual assault lawsuit. While these allegations were deeply troubling, it is important to note that Snoop Dogg has vehemently denied the accusations and has maintained his innocence. In 2022, he acquired Death Row Records, the iconic record label that played a significant role in launching his career. This move solidified his status as a music industry mogul and allowed him to preserve the legacy of the label that shaped his early years. Snoop Dogg's impact extends beyond the entertainment industry. He is known for his philanthropic efforts, including the establishment of his own youth football league. Through this initiative, he provides opportunities for underprivileged children to participate in the sport and learn valuable life skills. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we delved into the world of hip hop and exploring the life and career of these immensely talented artists. Click on the cards showing on your screen for more videos like this.